to order this July 15th, 2021 meeting of the Sacramento Area Flood Control Agency Board of Directors. We have called roll to establish a quorum. If you will mute your mics and rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. It's Cyril Shaw I just joined. Thank you. Of the United States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would please really read the message. Thank you so noted, Director Shaw. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This meeting is being recorded and will be aired on Metro Cable Channel 14 on Tuesday, July 20th at 9 a.m. And you may also view the meetings on Metro Cable 14's YouTube channel. Members of the audience wishing to address the board will have the opportunity during public comments, both not on the agenda and for each agenda item. As a courtesy, please remember to mute your microphones if you are not speaking. Thank you. Thank you. And at this time, do we have any public comments? <laughs> I have not received any, Vice Chairman Kennedy. Are there any members of the public on the phone or otherwise that have comments to make? Hearing none, we will move on to our public hearing. Item one is a public hearing, resolution number 2021086, approving the supplemental assessment role and setting the fiscal year 21-22 assessment rate for the Sacramento Area Flood Control Agency Operations and Maintenance Assessment District number one. Campbell. Thank you, Vice Chair Kennedy. This is Jason Campbell, Deputy Executive Director. Hello, members of the board. So it's that time of year again where we go through and we begin to establish our funding for the next fiscal year uh, as your board has adopted the fiscal year 21-22 budget. We are prepared to move forward with the assessment roles and a public, part of this public hearing is to identify the uh, rate as well as the overall uh, expenditures that we're going to try and cover through the O&M assessment district. Again, the assessment role is prepared in accordance with the Safe Act of 1990 and the California Water Code. The assessment collection this year will be around $6.3 million as adopted in your budget. And approximately 320,000 total parcels will be in the assessment district, plus or minus, depending on lot splits and a few other interesting things that go on during the course of the year. And the proposed assessment rate is a no rate increase. It truly is the same rate as prior years and we have nothing else to offer at this point in time. So with that, we're just recommending that the board adopt the rate and allow us to proceed with the assessment role as planned in the budget and otherwise. Thank you. Move to approve. Second. Okay, I did not get who any of that was. Was it Conant moving? Yes. Second was? Desmond. Hey, Desmond, thank you. Uh, any questions of the board? Comments? We have any public comment on this? I have not received any, Vice Chairman Kennedy. Thank you. Then would you please call the roll? Thank you. Director Conant? Aye. Director Reeder? Aye. Director Jones? Director Holloway? Director Shaw? Aye. Director Ashby? Director Harris? Director Jennings? Aye. Director Desmond? Aye. Director Frost? Director Frost. Director Kennedy. Aye. Director Natoli. Aye. Director Serna. Aye. Thank you. Mass motion passes with nine member approval. Item number two. Our next item would be the executive director's report for July 15th, 2021. Johnson. All right, thank you, Vice Chair Kennedy and members of the board. Um, I wanted to start just giving a little update on what's happening in our attempt to try to get the Yellow Bypass Comprehensive Study funded. Um, the I've mentioned this before about that uh, both the House and Senate have reinstated 
uh, forms of, of earmarks that are quite a bit different than in the past, but uh, still gives the gives the congressional members an opportunity to request studies. And in, in our case, um, both our Senators Feinstein and Padilla uh, requested uh, the Yolo Bypass Comprehensive Study be funded, as well as Congresswoman Matsui and Congressman Garamendi. So we, we appreciate the efforts of, of all of all of our congressional members. On the House side, um, it's it's a little more complicated as they their rules, they're restricting new starts, uh, which is making it complicated uh, since um, the core is interpreting this study as a new start. And in fact, just a couple hours ago, the House released their uh, draft um, FY22 uh, appropriations bill, and it did not include the Yellow Bypass Comprehensive Study in there because it, it was a new start. Um, however, it did include 156, almost $157 million in it for Natomas. And we want to, to thank Congresswoman Matsui for working so diligently here and her and her staff on um, getting that funding. Uh, as I mentioned last month, that's the largest uh, annual funding appropriations we've ever gotten outside of the supplemental funding. So so that, that part's much appreciated. And um, I, I know um, Congresswoman Matsui's staff still working with the the committees and and we'll work with the senators to still see if we can find a way to get the the study uh, funding going um, in this FY22. So I just wanted to bring you up to speed on that a little bit. Now, Lindy, if you could change the slides. We talked about this last month, but I, I, I want to expand a little more on it. Um, the governor signed the executive order on June 11th that basically extended our ability to do virtual meetings under the Brown and other acts uh, through the end of September. So uh, unless something else changes what that would mean for us, if you go to the next slide, Lindy. So we're planning on for the executive committee meetings, then our August and September executive committee meetings, we're still gonna hold virtually per our current format. And then unless there's any other changes in there. Um, the October meeting will have to go back to in person. We will get the details out, but we expect that will be back over at the county uh, at the uh, breakout session rooms like we've always had in the past. Lindy, if you could jump to the next slide there. Um, and so for our board meetings, uh, likewise, our August and September board meetings, we're going to be doing those virtually also. And uh, under the current rules, that means our October board meeting will have to go back in person. Uh, we're still working on location. The current city rules um, require a certain amount of time between use and of the city council chambers <coughs> to clean them between meetings. And right now there isn't that time. So we're, we're gonna be working with uh, Chair Harris and the city to, to try to figure out where we're going to hold our, our our meetings after October for the rest of the the year there. So, Lindy, if you go to the next slide. Um, so, based on uh, Cal OSHA set new rules for the workplace on June seventeenth. Based on those rules, uh, we, we plan to reopen the office starting on July twenty sixth. Lindy, if you go to the next slide. Um, we're going to, to to do an interim pro, kind of a hybrid program um, once we reopen. We'll have the general idea is to have some core days when everyone's in the office, um, and it's going to depend a little bit on their what you know they're working on and what their their duties are. But um, we do want to regain some of the lost internal coordination we've had and, and get reacquainted. There are uh, two of our our team members that I've never met with in person so that'll be good to to do that and then we're also going to use this uh, period kind of as a transition period there so lenny if you go to the next slide so at the end of um september we'll reevaluate a uh, number of things happening at the end of september that's when um the governor's executive order expires we'll see 
uh, we'll reevaluate depending on what the latest COVID requirements are. Um, and in anticipation of having to go back in person on the Brown Act meetings. And then also um, our state and federal partners where they are with their um, going back to in-person. I know at the federal level, we're already having some in-person meetings again. So that will also affect how we move forward as far as a, a hybrid type program. Then if you go to the next slide there, and um, also, we do want to capture some of the efficiencies that we have experienced from working remotely um, where we can and where they're appropriate. And we, we do recognize that there are still residual COVID impacts and, and risks that we will need to, to deal with. And so um, at the end of September, we'll, we, we need to take a look at where everything's at with those. If you go to the next slide, Lindy. Then we also, though, need to look at the functionality for the organization. Um, everyone, all of our team members did an outstanding job working remotely to keep our programs going um, over this last year plus. And um, I want to thank them for that. But we, with the, we did have some areas where we did have some deficiencies and some problems working remotely. So we need to figure out how to address that. We also, right at the start of the COVID outbreak, we were just starting a new program uh, to update and improve our, our how we handle our records. Um, it's been 32 years since SAFCO was uh, formed, and we've got just boxes and boxes in storage of documents, plans and specifications, and other records. And fortunately, we have some longtime safe employees that kind of know where everything is but once they're gone we won't have that ability to just go ask them where the stuff is so we recognize the need of getting our records more automated and um, the ability to access them and to uh, let us utilize uh, our documents to help us move forward a little bit better so um, th this new program will take quite a bit of uh, in-person involvement from each of our employees. So, Lindy, if you can go to the next slide there. So, um, as we reevaluate at the end of September, we'll also need to look at our policies and procedures and see if, as we look at a, a more longer-term hybrid approach, we may need to adjust some of them. And at that point, if we do, we'd bring those to the board to be updated. So that's really the end of my uh, report for today. And I'll see if there's any questions. Any questions of Rick? Doesn't appear to be. All right. Do we have any public comment? I have not received any public comments, Vice Chairman Kennedy, but I have had a request for you to Turn your microphone up a little bit. Yeah, I don't know why. I'm on calls all day, and I, that's the first time I'm hearing that. So are you having trouble hearing me? I can hear you fine. Yeah. Because, I mean, I, I'm up as much as I can get, so I'll just speak really loud. Okay, thank you. Okay. okay. And also, I think you saw that Sue Frost is on but can't get audio. I, I, I do have that, and I will read her vote in according to chat and go ahead and count her as a yes unless I hear otherwise. Thank you for noting that. And I, I'm on the phone. I don't know if anyone can hear me, but I'm listening in with my phone as well. We can hear you. Oh, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that takes us to consent. So we have consent matters. Items 3 through 11 are in order. Are there any opponent moves to approve? Is there a second? The chair will second. Uh, are there any comments, questions of uh, staff on the consent calendar? We have any public comment? I have not received any, Chairman Kennedy. Okay, thank you. Then let's call the roll. Director Conant. Aye. Director Reeder. Aye. Director Jones. Director Holloway. Director Shaw. Aye. Director Ashby. Director Harris. Dir Director Jennings. Aye. Director Desmond. Aye. 
Director Frost. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Director Kennedy. Aye. Director Natoli. Aye. And Director Serna. Aye. Aye. Motion passes with um, 10 member approval. All right, thank you. That takes us to separate matters, and I will make note that separate matters will require two thirds or nine member approval to pass. Please thank you, and I'd like to make a correction that the motion passes with nine member approval. Okay, thank you. Please, thank uh, you. please read into the record uh, item number 12. Separate matters item 12 is a public hearing resolution of necessity number 2021095, authorizing an eminent domain action to condemn real property interests for the Reach B component of phase 4B of the American River Watershed Program, the Thomas Levy Improvement Project, drainage canal easement acquisition over portions of Sacramento County's assessor parcel number 22501102025. Property owners Bollinger Properties LLC and Peter P. Bollinger Investment Company LLC. And that's good afternoon, directors. Um, this is Matt DeGroat, real estate program manager with SAFCA. And as was mentioned, this resolution is resolution of necessity for 2021-95, um, property owners Bollinger Properties LLC and Peter P. Bollinger Investment Company LLC. So the property mentioned, uh, previously mentioned, is located along the north side of Radio Road between Garden Highway and El Central Road in the Natomas Basin area of Sacramento County. An acquisition of the property is required for the Sacramento River East Levy Reach B component of the project. So here we have uh, an exhibit of the different reaches of the Natomas Levy Improvement Project. Reach B is over on the right side of the exhibit and in the blue area. Okay, Lindy. And here we have a map of where the property is located um, along the north side of Radio Road between Garden Highway and El Central Road. So you can see it um, with the red arrow and the APN um, showing the location of the property. It's a, a little bit off, set back from the river. So here we have attachment C. It is a sketch showing the potential acquisition areas and the levy improvements along Reach B. Um, which would include an adjacent levee with setback cutoff wall and or seepage burn, an operation and maintenance road, and the creation of a flood control works protection zone, and relocation of existing utility infrastructure. So you can see the, um, the proposed acquisition for the drainage canal easement. It's highlighted in red. Um, it's a long rectangular shape there with the arrow. So, so that is, you know, it's set back a little a ways from the river, but we need this particular drainage canal to um, to drain the parcel um, next to it that is going to be used for borrow for the project, and then afterward, it's going to be an active um, active wetland that's going to be managed, and it's and it's currently designed to drain toward the east, which will fall into this drainage canal. Okay, Lindy. So attachments D through D3 of the staff report um, include project description and necessity for the acquisition, environmental compliance documents and considerations in selecting the mitigation sites and the design analysis for the relocated irrigation and drainage canals. On February 11th, SAFCA sent a letter to the property owner advising them that um, SAFCA was preparing an appraisal to acquire a drainage canal easement over a portion of the property that you just saw. On April 29th um, of this year, SAFCA provided a formal offer to the property owners to purchase the property rights, which consisted of the drainage canal easement um, for above the full fair market value that was determined by the appraiser. Can I do?
So attachment D to the staff report, um, it shows some discussions that took place. Oh, can you go next slide, Wendy? Thank you. It shows some discussions that took place between the state and the property owners um, during which they discussed you know, the need for the drainage canal easement and the, the right of way accident process that would take place. So since we sent the first written offer, um, we have not reached an agreement with the property owner at this time. So on June 25th of 2021, we did mail a written notice to the owner advising him that that this board would hold a hearing um, today at this time to consider the adoption of a resolution of necessity to acquire the property by eminent domain. And we have one more, Lindy. And again, here is a little bit better exhibit showing the, the acquisition in question. You can see the, the hashed area, the long rectangular shape, if that's the drainage canal easement that we're proposing to purchase. It's a little over 2.7 acres, and again, it'll be used to drain um, the property adjacent to it, and that will be turned into a, a managed uh, marshlands. So, as I mentioned, um, we currently don't have an agreement with the property owner at this time. Um, we've been in discussions with this property for quite a while, just a general information sharing, um, but since we've provided the offer for just this drainage canal easement, we hadn't, we didn't really um, get it, get, get too far with the negotiations. It was hard to uh, get a good foothold with that. So, so that sometimes happens when we send out the um, the notice that we're going to be seeking a resolution that spurs some negotiations um, to life, and that's you know that's taking place here. So, we will continue to work with them on that on that track as well to hopefully seek a, a negotiated settlement. But at this time, we also um, believe we need to come before this board and request a resolution to secure, to, to make sure that we do have the property secured. So at, at this time, I'm uh, happy to take any questions. Are there any questions? questions? Okay, hearing none, are there any public comments? I have not received any requests to speak or public comments, Vice Chairman Kennedy. Thank you. And is there a motion? So I move, Conant. Second, doesn't. Conant moves to approve, seconded by Director Desmond. Please call the roll. Excuse Director. me, Vice Chairman uh, Kennedy, Jeremy Goldberg, Agency Council. We do need to open an, uh, a public hearing on this one. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Then with that, I will open the public hearing. If there's anyone in the public that would like to address this issue at this time, please signify so. Hearing none, then we will close the public hearing and call the roll. Thank you, Director Conant. Aye. Director Reeder. Aye. Director Jones. Director Holloway. Director Shaw. Aye. Director Ashby. Director Harris. Director Jennings. Aye. Director Desmond. Aye. Director Frost. Aye. Director Kennedy. Aye. Director Natoli. Aye. And Director Serna. Aye. Thank you. Motion passes with nine member approval. Item 13. Aye. Item 13 is another public hearing resolutions of necessity authorizing an imminent domain action to condemn real property interests for the reach I component of phase 4B of the American River Watershed Program, the Thomas Levy Improvement Project, fee interest and easement acquisition of portions of Sacramento County Assessor's parcel numbers, resolution number 2021-096. Portions of APN 274-0340-003-004-005-006-007 and 008 Property Owner Delta Point 268 LLC. Resolution number 2021-097. Portions of APN 274-0110061. Property Owner SS. 
T2 660 Garden Highway LLC. Thank you, Thank you. Uh, Mr. DeGroote. Good afternoon again, um, Director. This is Matt DeGroat, Real Estate Program Manager of Safeway again. So here we have a presentation that's going to encompass the two um, resolutions of necessity that were previously mentioned, uh, Property Owners Delta Point 268 LLC and SST2 660 Garden Highway LLC. So the properties um, are located at 2301 through 2355 Mossy Bank Drive and 660 Garden Highway in the Thomas Basin area of the city of Sacramento. And the acquisition of the property is required for the American River North Levy Reach I component of the project. Okay, Wendy. So like some previous acquisitions, um, th these encompass several um, parcels that are not easy to see on separate plot maps. So what we did was repaired an exhibit here for you to see how they all fit together and the entire intent of the acquisition. So we, we put that up front here so you can um, have a better idea of what we're dealing with as we go through this. So this first acquisition exhibit is for the, the Delta Point 268 property, um, resolution 2021-096. And what we're proposing to acquire are um, two acquisition easements. As you can see, they, they go down through um, the apartment complex here, and then also in fee, a fee strip 12 and a half feet wide toward the back of the property along the, the fence line. So these acquisition easements, they're, they're intended just to be used for uh, O&M purposes and in case we're ever in an active flood fight out here to have a way in and a way out safely. And the, um, the proposed fee acquisition will be used for you know, an O&M uh, maintenance road at the toe of the levy. Okay, Wendy. So again, here is the the second um, acquisition for resolution 2021-96, and this is SST to 660 Garden Highway. So at this site, there is a, a smart shop self storage uh, facility, and what we're proposing here is a fee acquisition again toward the very back of the property along the fence line there. And it kind of goes up into a flag shape toward the corner of that parcel. So what this will be needed again is for you know for O M activities, long term O M activities, and land side slope stability improvements are going to be part of the um, part of the levy construction project out there. Okay, Andy. So as uh, you've seen before, here is a map of the Thomas Levy improvement um, reaches. And this is reach I, so it's down at the bottom right-hand corner of the map. Kennedy. And here we have a map of the location of the properties um, to give you a better location of where those two are situated in comparison to each other. So uh, they're located at 2301 through 2355 Mossy Bank Drive and 660 Garden Highway. So you can see those indicated with the, uh, the arrows and the APN. APNs indicating where they're at. Okay, Wendy. So here we have attachment C, which is a sketch showing the levy improvements along reach I, um, which include uh, stability, levy still stability improvements, cutoff walls, the flattening of the land side levy slope, operation and maintenance road, um, creation of flood control works protection zone, and the relocation of some existing utility infrastructure. So attachments D through D3 of the staff report include the project description and necessity for the acquisition, the environmental compliance documents, and the considerations in selecting the mitigation sites, the design analysis for the relocation of the irrigation and drainage canals. On August 21st of 2019 and August 29th of 2019, Binner Rosenthal, which is the, the REACH I appraiser, sent letters to the property owners advising them that the state and SAFCA were preparing an appraisal to acquire a portion of the property in fee and also an access easement. Attachment F to the staff report are the diary discussions that took place between the state's right-of-way acquisition agent and the others, um, during which he discussed the potential effects the project 
has on the property and the requirement that the interest in the property would be needed to support the project. So at this point, um, the state turned over these acquisitions to SESCA to, to carry on with. And so and on February 22nd of 2021, SESCA did send letters to the property and advising them that SESCA would be taking over the negotiations from the state related to the acquisitions of this property rights on the property. Okay, Lindy. On April 9th of 2021 and April 13th of 2021, um, SAFCA provided formal offers to these property owners to purchase the, the property rights, which again consisted of fee acquisitions and over a portion of the, par uh, the parcels and also an access easements. And it was for above the, uh, the full fair market value that was determined by the appraiser. So attachment I are the diary discussions that took place between SAFCA's right away consultant and the owners again, which they discussed the potential effects of the project on the property and the requirement that the interests are needed and the process that was going to take place. So at this time, um, we have been unable to reach um, an agreement with the property owners. Uh, I believe they, the property owners have, we are in current negotiations with them and the property owners, they are obtaining their own um, appraisals. So that does take some time to get that in order and we will continue going down that path. But in order to maintain our schedule with the core, um, we also did have to issue on June 25th, um, we sent them a, mailed them a written notice advising them that this board would hold a hearing uh, today at this time to consider the adoption of a res resolution necessity to acquire the property in that domain. So um, that is the last slide. So with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Any questions from the board? Okay, hearing none, I will open up the public hearing. This time, if there's anybody on from the public who would like to address this issue, please do so now. Hearing none, I will close the public hearing and entertain a motion. Jennings will move the motion. Second, Conant. Motion by Director Jennings, second by Director Conant. There's no more questions or comments. Please call the roll. Director Conant. Aye. Director Reeder. Aye. Director Jones. Director Holloway. Director Shaw. Aye. Director Ashby. Director Harris. Director Jennings. Aye. Director Desmond. Aye. Director Frost. Aye. Director Kennedy. Aye. Director Natoli. Aye. Director Cerna. Aye. The motion passes with nine member approval. Thank you. Items Thank you. 14 through 23 are receive and file. Are there any questions about any item on receive and file? Hearing none, thank you all. I appreciate you taking some of your time out of your summer. And we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.